Hey guys, welcome back to the PFSense series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to set up SSH on your PFSense router or your PFSense router and firewall configuration. All right. So uh, before we actually continue with this series, I just want to update you guys on my perspective and the way I'll be looking at things, especially when talking about PFSense uh, on, on both sides. So for now, when talking about configuring your router and firewall, I'll be looking at it from a systems or network administrator position or role. All right. So I'll be trying to configure it for security. And then I'll, when that is done, I'll be showing you how to set up uh, machines or virtual machines uh, inside a VLAN and then how to perform penetration testing and how uh, you can perform lateral movement, all that good stuff. But for now, for the purpose of this of this series of videos uh, in regards to PFSense, I'm going to be looking at it as a systems or network administrator. All right, now that I've, uh, I've essentially explained my perspective in this particular set of videos, we can get started. So why would you need to enable SSH access uh, on your router or your firewall? Well, uh, that may seem like a really, really obvious question is that you might want to access it on your computer because remember, uh, you may have a network room where you have all your servers and that's primarily where you'll have your router and firewall configuration in the form of a computer with its own panel. But you can imagine working on your own desk and you want to access the firewall really quickly. Uh, you would need to do that via SSH. Of course, you can do it through the web uh, GUI configuration panel. But again, this is only a sort of a passive access onto uh, the actual control or the core control of the firewall and the router. All right, so it's really important to understand how to do that. Now, the other reason is that if you do or are considering uh, setting up SSH to work on your WAN, meaning you can access uh, the firewall or router uh, from an external network or from home or remotely, really, that's uh, what, I was, what I was getting to. So setting up uh, SSH access to access the firewall or router remotely. So you could be home, you could have left work and you want to access the router. Well, I'll also show you how to do that right now. So those those are very, very good reasons uh, for essentially enabling SSH access on your router and firewall. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that as securely as possible. Now, I'm currently logged on to the web GUI and I still have the same configuration as the previous video when I showed you how to install PFSense. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go into your system and you need to go into your advanced settings. All right. Before we actually touch any users. Now, I'll be covering the advanced menu, but for now, let's just stick with what we are doing. You want to scroll all the way down to secure shell and uh, you want to enable uh, enable secure shell. And as for your authentication, you want to select whether you want to use a public key or you want to use a password or public key. In my case, uh, I'm going to say a password or public key or what you can do is just simply use a public key only. All right. And for the port, this is very important if you are configuring it. Uh, to to be accessed through the one then changing the port is very important because that is a port that is going to be really really targeted and of course if you are on your local network then again you might want to set this up and when, when talking about firewall rules I'll show, you, I'll show you how to prevent uh, particular nmap scans from actually determining what ports are running on the router but for now we'll just leave it as the default on port 22 and uh, once that's done because we've selected our authentication to work with a public key uh, only what we can do as well is we can also enable password or public key. But for now, uh, let's use the public key, uh, the public key only. So you need to generate your your two pairs, your private key and your public key. And of course, you can do that on Windows and on Linux. On Windows, you can do it on uh, you can use you can do it with Putty, and uh, on Linux, you can use your uh, USSH key generator to do so. All right. So I'm going to save this and. Uh, Apologies if the router takes a while to load. I haven't actually optimized it yet, so don't worry about that. I'll just wait for this to load up. Shouldn't take uh, a lot of time now. All right, uh, the settings have successfully been applied, and now we need to go into system, and you want to go into your user manager. This is where we will be essentially providing our public key. So let us talk about generating your SSH keys, which I'm sure many of you already know how to do. So the first thing we need to do is we need to use putty. Uh, we need to use putty gen. If you're on Windows, if you're on uh, Linux, you can simply use the SSH generation or the SSH key gen, and that'll essentially generate your keys for you. Uh, and you'll be able to log in. The only thing you need to do is you need to uh, you, you need to actually save uh, the public key. So I'm just going to hit generate here. And again, we're just going to rotate around the screen here and just give it a bit of randomness here uh, so that it can generate our key for us. 
And once it's done, we should be good. All right, so this is your public key here, and we want to save the private key because, uh, yes, we actually, I'm gonna provide a passphrase before I do that. So provide a passphrase here, like so, and I'm gonna save the private key, and I'll just save it on my desktop here, and I'll just call it uh, PF Sense. All right, and I'm just gonna hit save and that's done. All right, now I'll copy the public key here onto my clipboard and I'll edit my admin user. Now, if you want to create any users here, you can do it from this page. Uh, if you want to uh, also uh, separate uh, access or roles, you can do that from your groups and take a look at your settings. This is something I'll be covering later on, but hopefully you'll get an idea of what's going on. So if I wanted to create another user uh, who had uh, sys admin uh, privileges if you go to groups right over here you can uh, go ahead and take a look at the at the role so the group name is admins and of course the description is the fact that this group is only for system administrators so you can get a good idea of the roles here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to hit uh, on the little pen or pencil here and uh, you can from this page you can edit uh, the settings in regards to the user's access etc so the password here i'm just going to specify the password right over there so because I know it, it will prompt me to uh, to actually confirm the password if I'm making any changes you want to go down to keys and paste in the public key right over here all right and once that is done we can just hit save I'm just going to give that a few seconds right over here and uh, once that is done uh, this user should have the public keys ready to go so that when we load the private key with putty uh, we can actually access it uh, we can have SSH access all right, so there we are. It's, uh, the settings seem to have changed. Uh, now we can go on to our desktop here and we can load the PFSense key with pageant right over here, which is part of the putty suite. So I'm just gonna load it up here. It's gonna ask me for my passphrase. I'm gonna hit okay. And uh, now we can open up a new putty session here. And I'm gonna type in the IP address for my router and firewall configuration, which is 192.168.1.1. Let me just increase uh, the the font size here so that we can actually see what's going on uh, and there we are so i'm going to hit open and uh, just like that it is going to prompt us to log in apologies for the speed again uh, there might be a few connection issues that i still have to optimize all right it's going to prompt you to log in as and you're going to provide the username as it is on the putty gui configuration i'm going to hit enter and there you are so we are authenticated uh, via SSH to the firewall um, and router. So this is the screen. If you have watched my installation video, this is the console screen. And it's really awesome that you can have access to the screen via SSH because you can essentially control it even if the server room is miles away. Or, you know, if you're in another country, you can essentially manage the company's infrastructure remotely. All right, so you can see that these are the settings that I had um, when I had set up the router. So we have one which is uh, getting its IP from my primary router, which is outside my room or my office. And then we have the LAN access here, which is provided on the local IP one and the appropriate subnet, which is 192.168.1.1. Uh, so these are the, op the other options that you can interact with uh, on the console. Again, these are all things that we'll be taking a look at. So you can reboot the system, you can hold the system, you can ping a host, you can access the shell, you can restart the web configurator, you can uh, update from console, you can disable SSH as well, uh, and you can, also, uh, you, can, you can of course reconfigure the interfaces right over here, and you can essentially control the entire, uh, the, the entire firewall and uh, router configuration. All right, so that is how to configure SSH on your PFSense installation. Uh, I hope that made sense. If you have any questions in regards to the video, please leave them in the comment section. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by uh, supporting us on Patreon. We really appreciate uh, all the support you've given us. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.